Morning folks and welcome back to the shack for another video and guess what? Got another parcel. Uh, unfortunately what's inside it, which are transformers, uh, unfortunately they're not for me. Uh, they are for a friend who has asked me to build him an audio amp. So my little cardboard box contained a couple of these things. Just turn it around. Lundell audio output transformers. Now these things are custom made and oops, the file is stuck in there. They're custom made and uh, they cost a fortune, £250 a shot, and there's one, the other one with a metal case, and these are going to be the heart of the latest audio amp project, which, to give you a clue, bring that up here. We've already started work on. Yep. A stereo audio amp with GU50s and hopefully those uh, luscious audio output trannies. So I've got all the bits for this and I've been drilling the chassis until we're going to put it all together and see what it sounds like. Anyway, what I'll do is um, probably come back a few days from now and uh, give it a quick test run, see what it sounds like. Well, that's what I'm after. And Pair of GU50s. Let's build an amplifier. So here it is, folks. This is my latest masterpiece, and what I'm going to do is show you the uh, underneath, and we'll also have a look at the circuit diagram. So I think let's have a look at the circuit diagram first, and then uh, we'll uh, flick it over, and you can see what it's like underneath, and we will then try to put some music through it and then you can see what it sounds like and make your own mind up. So the schematic um, <clears throat> that I've used for this amplifier is more or less based on this design for a push-pull uh, amplifier um, based on two EL34s uh, which was uh, from an article by a chap called Klaus Byrith, who uh, was commissioned by Lundahl uh, to write a paper on sort of building a uh, sort of fairly straightforward uh, push-pull amplifier, and what he's done is essentially modified the classic Mullard 520 um, using a pair of EL34s, and. Um, I've essentially used this circuit, uh, uh, adapted it very slightly for um, to be used with GU50s. GU50s are probably, I would say, in terms of audio valves, they're probably um, EL34s on steroids. Um, they can they can certainly handle a lot more power, um, and the sound quality I think from GU50s is actually uh, pretty good. Um, but this circuit. Uh, actually works pretty well for GU50s and this is what I've gone for but I just want to point out a few things that you have to bear in mind with um, GU50s so the the front end of this is is fairly um, standard in the sense that um, he's got an EF86 here now in the original Mullard design they actually had this as a sort of standard pento but what he's done is he's um, strapped the screen grid to the anode and converted it into a triode um, just to reduce the gain and by reducing the gain you can reduce the distortion and the THD, the total harmonic distortion 
Well, that's the theory. Um, so he's that. He, this is the main part that he's really modified when you look at the Mullard circuit. Um, the phase splitter with an ECC83 is pretty much the same. Uh, what he has done is he's introduced sort of an AC balance here using that pot. I haven't included this pot incidentally. I've just stuck the um, the DC straight in, in between these two 150k resistors, and it and it's fine. But if you want to, if you want to be a purist, you could certainly um, put that pot there. The um, the biasing arrangement I've used this and um, the bias voltage that we've got for the GU50s um, is about minus 50 so it's not dissimilar to EL34s and obviously the when you set all this up you've got to measure this and get the and you measure the voltage across these uh, cathode resistors to try and work out the uh, cathode current which you've got to set. Now um, what you've noticed here is that the output transformer here on the, with these two EL34s they've got it in ultra linear configuration so in other words they've got taps on this output transformer which goes to the screen grids now I battled to find an output transformer uh, for my GU50s which was of the right plate to plate impedance now because of the GU50s the, the load line is about 10k uh, plate to plate impedance which um, is a lot higher than EL34s and the um, the plate voltage actually ideally should be about 500 volts. Uh, my ones, my amplifier is running about 480. It was um, off load. It is uh, higher than that, but obviously with on load it does sag a bit. Um, so that's 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 one thing you have to bear in mind. So what I've done with mine is I've I'm the transformer I've got does not have uh, taps for ultra linear um, configuration. And I've had to go for um, a separate supply to the screen grids of the GU50s, uh, which are regulated. And it, it seems to work. I mean, um, I, I, ultra linear is obviously ideal, but um, the, the, with the transformers that I've got, I had to, I had to make do with that. So uh, and, it's, and it seems to work all right. So that's... Um, and uh, the, just the other thing is also I've got negative feedback here. I did actually change this. I, I, it was originally three... 3.3k um, I've just uh, reduced the negative feedback ever so slightly to 5.6 and um, uh, it seems to be alright you can omit this altogether but you're gonna get a lot of noise and um, possible hum and all the rest of it and your distortion may uh, increase so um, I think it's probably a good idea to have a, a negative feedback on the cathode of the uh, input input uh, stage so that's um, that's more or less the circuit this is the uh, underside of this um, amp and first glance is it does look pretty scary um, but yeah, it's not too bad it's um, it's sort of laid out in sort of a modular fashion I suppose and uh, just point out a few things here so right at the top here we've got two uh, FETs and uh, a few capacitors and uh, shock horror semiconductors in a valve amp but that is actually our screen grid regulator circuit and uh, there's one FET uh, per channel try and keep the screen grids regulated because this this amplifier is not uh, it's not ultra linear uh, the, the transformers are simple push-pull transformers but they don't have ultra linear taps so uh, obviously we're using the GU50s in pentode configuration and the uh, uh, grid 2 screen grid has to be fed with a regulated supply so those uh, two MOSFETs produce about uh, or, or keep the voltage around about 275 volts uh, plus or minus all the capacitors there on the other boards again power supply and filtering which is quite essential that's the underside of our main power transformer and uh, that transformer was a bit of a lucky find really um, and good news I've got two of them so uh, we can perhaps make something similar with the other one 
down the bottom there I've got a uh, filament transformer that's a 12 volt filament transformer for the uh, GU50s as the heaters are uh, 12 volts and that um, that big power transformer actually has uh, has a 6.3 winding for the uh, other valves and it also has a 50 volt winding at 50 milliamps which is voltage doubled and provides the uh, negative bias I probably probably could have got away without actually voltage doubling it uh, but I wasn't quite sure what my bias voltage was going to be for these GU50s. Turns out it's about uh, uh, round about mm, 47 volts or something like that which is split between the two valves those are my bias adjusting pots and uh, those are the bases of GU50s these valves get really really hot one thing I did notice they get they get really hot this chassis gets very warm when the thing is running and uh, uh, I guess that's probably not surprising because the quiescent current of each tube is about 70 milliamps so uh, I think you can expect a bit of heat just a few points to note um, well I try to use polypropylene capacitors those are those nice V-shay ones the yellow ones which uh, are very good just get it in focus there and then moving down one thing I've started doing with my valve amps is with the mains coming in I've uh, I try to I wrap it all up in copper wire for screening and I found that uh, um, well I tried that on the 833A amp because I was getting some hum on the 833A amp and I think it was due to that and I wrapped it all up in copper wire and copper um, foil and it eliminated the hum so I think that's a, a useful tip uh, for trying to screen you know the mains uh, wiring as it comes into the amp. Not much else really. Um, everything's pretty standard. Uh, just one word about these tube sockets though. I think I might have mentioned it before in one of the other videos. If you're going to build anything with a GU50, don't ever ever buy the cheap ceramic sockets that are on eBay because they are absolutely hopeless and they will cause damage to your valves if you want to build with anything with GU50s buy the genuine Russian valve holders and don't um, dismantle them keep them in the uh, cages because it helps to protect the valve and it slots and it helps to locate the valve as well but the, those cheap ceramic things on eBay are just a total waste of money and they just destroy valves I lost about two or three uh, valves with uh, with using those sockets it's because all the tubes are all loose the um, not the tubes the pins I'm sorry the pins are all loose so don't ever think about buying them right moving on so I think what we ought to do is give you a quick demo so let us play a bit of music from the uh, the computer we've got this going via a DAC digital to analog converter and you can sort of get a feel for what it sounds like I hope obviously it's, you're not in the room with me but uh, you know hopefully it sort of sounds alright anyway it's some junky music off uh, YouTube <laughs> I keep on running, no, I should've went out high, high, high. 
Right, okay guys, that sort of gives you more or less uh, a uh, interesting demo of this. Uh, sounds alright actually. Now for some reason, uh, that um, GU50 on the right there, on that uh, right hand channel, uh, does seem to, uh, the anode of that does seem to glow a bit more than the uh, than the others. And I have checked that out actually, because the biasing on it is exactly the same, so um, I'm not entirely sure why that, uh, why that tube is actually um, glowing a bit more red than the others, even though the uh, uh, cathode current through it is exactly the same as the other one. Um, yeah, maybe it's just the tube, I don't know, but uh, I suppose you could swap it out and see whether it makes any difference. But having said that, um, it sounds pretty good. So uh, if it ain't broke, as they say. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, quite pleased with this amplifier, actually. It's come up pretty well. And it's, a, as I said, GU50, push-pull, uh, 30 watts per channel. And uh, sounds pretty good. Till the next time, thanks for watching.